Hey everyone, Piano Man Chuck here. All right, so at NAM 2018 in Anaheim, um, I went ahead and took pictures as usual. I did not take very many pictures this year because uh, mostly it was other things for me at this show. A lot of business going on. Didn't have that much time to hit the floors as I would have liked to, but for the pictures that I did snap, I'm gonna go over those right now and narrate them as we go along. Don't even remember what I took here, but here we go. Oh yeah, okay, so we're starting out with breakfast, and of course, coffee and uh, sausage and eggs. They didn't have bacon that day. Croissants and butter and potatoes and uh, uh, lemon poppy seed loaf and so on. Well, anyway, you need a good breakfast to start your day, and they do that for you if you know about it and if you're willing to get there early enough and wait in line around 6, 6.30 in the morning for them to open up around 7.50. And this, this is the Korg Prologue. This is not the real one. This is, well, it's real, but it's all chromed up and blinged out. and It's really cool. What it really looks like, the one next to it right there, that is the functional one. That's the Korg Prologue. It actually took best in show. And with good reason, it's got some really awesome sounding songs to it. And there it is again, encased, so that you have all that shiny, bling, chrome, whatever. All right, moving on. Oh, this this was a, a real piano. You can see it's a full piano housed in a car. It's not a real car, but they want a lot of money for this. I think somebody said it was like $50,000, and I just cannot see paying that for something like this. I mean, this is bigger than a regular piano. Why would I want that in there? All right, but anyway, it's a conversation piece. It's a furniture piece, and uh, it's definitely something to look at that would be unique in your living room. And there we go. Oh, that's that's a buddy of mine right there, Bernie. He's a cool guy. Um, story about him. He had a band when he was in high school, and the singer in his band was Johnny Mathis. He wound up firing him because he was paying him $10 an hour, and Johnny didn't want to drop down to $5 per hour. So he fired him and found somebody else for $5 per hour. Little did he know, as time went on, Johnny would become very famous. So Bernie has screwed up on that one, and that's his son, who's a big hot shot over at Roland. Uh, Kurzweil has a couple of pianos out, um, digital pianos, new ones, the SP-1 and SP-6. Uh, here's a little information on the SP-6 and the pricing on it. The SP-1 is a little bit less, it's more of an introductory piano. This is a, a unique shop where you can get all kinds of vintage or whatever novelty items over here. It's pretty cool. And they had quite a few items over here. And yeah, there's a picture of my finger blocking the lens. Ah, slash. Now this right here, this Fats Domino. This is a like the inside of a, a piano action over here. And um, it's a clock and every couple seconds these things turn and it drives the clock. Interesting. This is the basement of you know hall A, B, C, and D. Usually underneath hall D you have this humongous area that's you find a lot of cool products there and a lot of vendors over from Asia and usually it's so crowded you can't even walk around. This year, take a look at this. A lot of it is empty. And I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, that new building that used to be a parking structure. The ACC building, they call it. And a lot of them are over in that building now. Cause look at all this room that you can walk in in the basement. I've never seen it that light before. Um... Usually it's pretty heavy with traffic. So 
That was kind of neat to see it like that. I've never seen that. Ah, here we go. I showing the hut toy piano. All right, this is going to give you some idea of just how humongous this show is. There's four large convention halls labeled Hall A, Hall B, Hall C, and Hall D. And they're multi-level. Like over here, you've got three levels. And the, the piano lounge with all the pianos in it was on level three. And the basement I just showed you was down beneath Hall D. And to give you some idea of just how humongous this is, and this is the, the largest convention center on the West Coast, I believe, or in the West. Let's blow this up a little bit. And when you walk in, here's Casio, all right? Now, Casio had one of the bigger booths. And you can see it's pretty big here. You can fit a couple hundred people in there. Right next to them, you had Korg and a few others. And this was probably three times the size of the Casio booth. You could get about a thousand people in there. Easy. Now, just to give you an idea, this Korg booth is huge. You can't really tell just by looking at this. And actually, the Casio booth is huge. So let's shrink this back down and leave the convention center and go into the Marriott Hotel where they joined multiple ballrooms here to form this 25,000 square foot booth that belongs to Yamaha. Now Yamaha, as you know, makes pianos. They also bought out Bosendorfer, so they own Bosendorfer Piano. They kept the name. They make reed instruments and wind instruments and string instruments and drum and percussion instruments and and um, of course they make stage pianos and synthesizers and all kinds of stuff like that 25,000 square feet this right here that's the arena seats a couple thousand people this is about as big as the arena actually looking at it it's bigger than the arena just to give you a feel for how humongous this show is all right and these right here it just gives you what's on the upper levels of these convention halls all right so moving on now well, that's the same thing a little bit differently it shows you the layout this is the piano portion of the Yamaha booth this looks huge, but it's only a small fraction of what you can see at Yamaha. All right, so looking at the next, you can see all the other things that are going on. Um, all of these digital pianos, stage pianos, and so on and so forth. But you can see how deep it goes. It goes even farther than that. Lots of room. Yes, Yamaha makes motorcycles too. And of course, they had to put a motorcycle in there to show you that they make motorcycles too. All right, this is the new Casio CTX series. This is the CTX 700. This is an awesome 68 key board. What it does is just unbelievable for, are you ready for this? Sitting down? $175. I'll cover this more in detail later on in the year. But this is just one of four new models in the new CTX series. I already covered Dexabel's uh, new revolutionary operating system 4.0 Aquaviva. This is Dexabel's new S1, a 68 key keyboard. And this is awesome. Full-size, fully-weighted keys. Uh, if you go to their website, they're going to show you a guy um, who's wearing this on his back, strapped to, strapped to his back, riding a bicycle to a gig. It's pretty cool. But it is a really capable little um, stage piano. This is part of their new 
S9, which is very cool. Notice that it has nine sliders or faders, and those are motorized. So you can memorize these different scenes and then recall them when you need them. Say you go somewhere and you do a gig and you've got the EQ and mixing just perfect. Then you go somewhere else and do another gig. And then a couple months later, you come back to that place you did this gig. And you just press a scene button and you get all the settings back that you had back then. You don't have to write anything down or remember it. or It's really cool. And it says right here, motorized draw fader technology applied to tone wheel organ sounds, mixer, MIDI control, EQ, and so on. All right, this is Dexabel's new desktop unit. It is their sound engine in a desktop unit. Really cool because now you can use any controller and have your Dexabel sounds with you. You're not limited to the controllers that are, or the key actions that are built into their products, which is mainly, mainly Fatar. And I think they're working on something else right now. I'm not exactly sure. I'll know more later on in the year. And of course, Kawhi's new MP7 SE, which now has the Shigeru pianos in there and the better RH3 key action rather than the RH2 that was in the older MP7s. And the new MP11 SE, which is basically the same as the MP11, the same GF keys. It also has the Shigeru pianos in there now, and an optical triple pedal that never needs calibration or anything else like that. Oh, and this, this is something to behold. This is Kawhi's Novus NV10. This, oh my god. If you ever get a chance to play one of these, go for it. It is a real keyboard action. It is the same key action that's found in their acoustic concert grand series. Same thing. It's not a digital. It's the same acoustic action in this hybrid type of piano. And it just sounds amazing. You cannot distinguish the sound between this and one of their acoustic pianos. Absolutely amazing. And it's got a humongous price tag. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I think it's around $17,000 US. Korg has a new digital piano out, an entry level. But this entry level piano, as simple as it is, is different. Because not only does it have some awesome piano sounds in there, it has Korg's finest RH3 action built into it. Which, for an entry-level piano, that is really a statement Korg is making. And it's really nice. I could use this for solo piano gigs, and I would be perfectly happy. Another shot of the same thing. Korg now has a... PA that looks to me like it's designed to compete with Mackie's Free Play or even Roland's uh, KC-110, which is now the KC-220. But a lot of this, including an app that communicates with the speaker via Bluetooth, it all is reminiscent of the Mackie Free Play. So I'll try to see what else I can find out over here about that. Nord, of course, has the Electro 6D, which really doesn't need an introduction. A lot of people know about this already. And Studio Logic has a new Numa Compact 2X. And the difference between the 2 and the X, even though it's still 15 and a half pounds, but now they have these nine faders and they can be used for the tone wheel organ. And I'm hoping they have some other use, too. I'll find out more about that as we go along, too. Awesome, awesome machine. Now, the Numa Compact 2 was $499. This is $200 more. It's $699. Don't quote me on this, but somebody there said that a lot of the sounds on this is modeled and partly uh, sampled. 
uh, again, don't quote me. I don't know if that's quite correct yet. We'll find out more later. But it's a nice board to have at 15 and a half pounds. And what I am seriously considering my favorite new board of the year, Yamaha's new Genos. Now this is replacing the Tyros that they had for a long, long time. And this Genos, the reason I love this so much, I mean the design, look at it, it's, it's an awesome design. But every single sound that I've heard coming out of this was just sheer perfection. Based on sounds alone, I would award this my keyboard pick of the year. This, this is really an awesome unit. More on that later. But look at that. Even the design and the presentation is a work of art right there. And it has a 9 inch color touchscreen, which is one more inch than the leading workstation right now, which is the Korg Kronos. That's at 8 inches. Here we are at 9 inches. So Kronos now has something that is competing with it. And to the extent of just how much it competes, find out more about that later again these are all new so i don't know that much about it yet ah uh, here we go <laughs> another breakfast another day roland the gp609 which is basically it's baby grand shaped and it sounds good but the feel on it with that pha50 that has got to be the best feeling Roland keyboard action that I've played on. Did a good job with that. A little bit more information about that. Ah, here's a little bit of furniture. So if you have a home studio, this is kind of neat to put your stuff on. Zar furniture. Uh, here we go. This should have been with the other, but like I said, the Numa Compact 2X was $699.95, and if you can read this, it's a little bit blurred. It'll tell you a little bit about what's going on over there. And comparing it with the Numa Compact 2, of course. Ah, uh, the SP-1, which I mentioned before from Kurzweil, your basic entry-level bread-and-butter digital keyboard, $995. Good price because everything is big, it's solid, and it's well laid out. And there it is, so you can see more of a full view. It's a relatively simple layout. Uh, not too much of a learning curve unless you're absolutely new to digital pianos. The one smart piano, that's another kind of interesting one over there. Turn any piano into a smart piano. Basically, it's this bar that goes above your standard piano keys. And as something is playing on this app, the keys have leds on them and they light up showing you which keys you're supposed to press in order to play a song it's kind of a neat idea i don't know how well that works out for learning but i guess it is selling so maybe it is working all right and then they sell it with with a piano too ah breakfast again all right, we're back to the beginning. So that's it for the amount of pictures that I took anyway. And that's what I've went over. So I'll try to dig up a little bit more for you later on in the year about these products and a follow-up. In the meanwhile, Piano Man Chuck, peace out. Thanks for watching.